what's up guys welcome back to the channel in today's video we're gonna hop back on the ninja 400 in the previous video we got a lot of work done to this bike if you missed that video i'm gonna have a link in the description go check it out today we're gonna continue right where we left up as you can see it's still a little bit dirty in here so right now i'm gonna go ahead and clean it up and then we can start tossing some new parts on the motorcycle All right, so I've cleaned out the tail end of the Ninja 400 as much as possible. The next part we're gonna be turning on the bike is a nice tail tidy. Let's get it on. Now installing the tail lights. Now we have all the wires up top. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the connectors, splice it into this wiring for the brand new tail lights, and then we can connect it to the original connectors. All right guys, so I simply just cut off the connectors of the original tail lights. So now I'm wired in, fully secured. All I have to do is just plug everything to this one and we should have functioning tail lights. That should all be good now. And now I've cleaned up everything. As you can see, everything's connected. It's tucked right in there, it's all clean. Now we're gonna see if I actually have any idea what I just did in here. So we're gonna turn on the ignition. Let's see, look at that. Works like a charm, license plate, the blinker. Obviously there is no relay on it right now. It still has a stock relay. So it's gonna blink a tad bit faster. That one is actually messed up. Let me look at this. All right, so I actually figured that out. So it turns out because the circuit is not complete on the left side or on the right side, it wasn't working because I did not have that indicator connected in the front. But now that I have, it's working properly. And same for the right side again, working properly. The next thing we're gonna get done right now is installing a brand new fuel rail. If you recall in the previous video, why removing the tank? The fuel rail stress broke on this one. I have a replacement unit. Let's get it installed. We'll have the old fuel rail out. And in here we have the brand new one. Reinstalling the injectors. And we're gonna reinstall the injectors. Now we can pull this cap off, like so. So with the fuel rail installed, it's now time to install the air box. But as you can see, quite filthy. So we're gonna clean this up. And now it's cleaned up. We're gonna remove the plugs we put in here, connect all the hoses. Now I'm ready to install the gas tank. Now I'm gonna connect the fuel tank breather hoses. Now a quick first start.
all right so i figure right now is a good time to let you guys know what the game plan is with this build right now i'm going to install as much parts as possible i'm not going to be installing brand new ferns i'm not going to be painting these ferns anytime soon because this bike is a bike i purchased for my wife so i figured i might as well let the cat out of the box right now she's never ridden before so this is going to be a beginner bike for her and obviously like all beginners at some point are going to drop the bike so there's no point installing brand new ferns on it or painting the current oem ferns i currently have so i'm going to put it all back together i have some ebay crash cages i purchased and then when the season comes to an end or maybe a couple of seasons later we can revisit the topic of throwing brand new ferns or painting the oem ferns i have whatever the case may be i hope that makes sense it is the only logical thing to do in a situation like this so that's what i'm gonna do save myself some time because i have a ton of other builds to get to i have stuff hanging around in the background there's one over there right now actually more stuff to be done so i might as well get to it while i still can i'm going to install the rectifier All right, guys, as you can see, we have all the old oil out. We have some brand new fluid right at the level where it should be. That's perfect. Next part we're gonna be installing on the Ninja 400 is gonna be a radiator guard. I always recommend people throw this on the bike because it's cheap, it's preventive maintenance, so to say. It's easier to replace one of those covers than replacing the busted radiator. It's also cheaper. So we have a brand new one over here. Let's toss it on the bike. The tape goes on the sides like so. And there you have it. We got double-sided tape on both sides. Now, as you can see, guys, this is installed. The next thing I'm going to try to take care of today, the rider foot pack. As you can see, it's completely broken off. The piece is missing. Obviously, the piece is no good to me, even if I had it. But I was looking in my pile of hardware and I found this piece from the old ZS6R that I sold. I replaced it with some aftermarket rear sets. I removed this from the rear set, obviously, because I don't need it. I don't have that bike anymore. But this is going to fit perfectly just in there. So let's remove that piece and throw on this piece. We have that piece out. Slide pin in. I'm going to just lock it in place. All right, guys, and just like that, as you can see, we have a functional foot peg. A few moments later. All right, guys, I have just pulled out the bike outside to do some much needed cleaning. Because as you guys can obviously tell, this bike is quite filthy. So I was not going to record this, but I figured since I'm making decent progress with my special, special solution over here, I'm getting this head is looking good. As you can see the difference over there, that back end I started working on it and it's looking much, much better. So I'm going to get to work on this to get it as good as possible. I cleaned up the exhaust as good as possible. Obviously, it doesn't look brand new, but it definitely looks a whole lot better than it did before when we first took this apart. And the next thing we're going to be getting done on this bike is removing that big old exhaust you see over there and replacing it with something that looks and sounds better. And here we have the perfect solution for this recipe. Look at how big this is. Yeah, there's clearly a big difference between the old stock one and this new slip on we're trying on this bike. We're shaving a whole bunch of weight just by doing this. I'm gonna install the brand new slip on exhaust. Ah, fits like a glove. I personally like to reuse the stock hardware, so that's what I'm gonna do right here. Now we're gonna secure it in place. Now that we have the brand new exhaust installed on the motorcycle, it's only right to hear actually sound. So let's start it up. Now 
that's a big difference do you hear the little pops in this little 400 it sounds pretty good i'm not gonna lie yeah i don't know if the wife's gonna like that because that's a little bit louder than stock well quite a bit louder but it sounds really really good as you guys know i always throw this on all my bikes because it just makes sense to do these are the gb racing covers and it protects the motorcycle in case of when you go down to prevent things like this from happening just goes over here like so now fit it up as you can see it looks beautiful i'm gonna go ahead and pull out the hardware now i'm gonna install the gb racing covers and on the right side over here we have one for the coolant pump housing and we're gonna install the cover Both. And now we have the last piece of the puzzle, the clutch cover. Installing the cover. The next part we're gonna throw on the Ninja 400 is the most basic part you can throw on a motorcycle. And that's the motorcycle spool. As you can see, I'm running the good old bolt setup on both sides. Got some brand new spool over here to test on this bike. Now I can properly lift up the bike on the pitbull lift step. Much better. All right, so what I have here is a JT front sprocket. I also have a rear lightweight aluminum rear sprocket. We have some beautiful EK chain to throw on this bike. My surprise, it actually looks pretty clean in here. The chain cover is not caked up in a lot of old chain loop. But then again, this bike has really low kilometers. Old sprocket is out. All right, guys, as you can see, it's looking much better. It's almost embarrassing to see how long it took me to clean that up, but I am super satisfied that it's looking good, as you would probably agree with me. Now we can throw on the new sprockets and chain. Brand new JT sprocket. Quick tip of the day, when installing new sprockets in your motorcycle, you wanna make sure that the sprocket teeth lines up with the chain guide. So if you look over there, as you can see, the sprocket suit, it's lining up with the chain guide perfectly. If I was supposed to remove the sprocket and install it this way, and we go back over here and look at it, as you can see, the sprocket is way more in and it's not centered with the chain guide. So when installing this, you wanna make sure that the sprocket goes in the proper way so the chain is not misaligned. We have the old sprocket out now. Gonna go ahead and do a little bit of house cleaning in here. And now I have the brand new sprocket over here. I'm gonna break it open. I really love the sprockets. Look at this, clean. Now we can install it in place. Now installing the rear tire. like so and that's out now we can separate this piece lock this down and install the master link master link going in place for new o-rings turn the master link in place having the right tools makes this so much easier as you can see we 
have that all secured now. So now as you can see, we almost have the right side fairing almost completely put together. But there's one thing we gotta get done. In this box over here, I crash cages to go on this bike. One part over here, and we have the other one in there, and all the hardware that's required to mount it on a Ninja 400. Nice powder coated finish. Looking good. And now we have the package that includes all the hardware. I'm gonna open it up. Not bad. Now we have both crash cages out here. We have the brackets, we have all the hardware. So we're gonna go over to the right side and begin to install over there before we come over to the left side and do the same thing pretty much over here. Now I'm gonna remove the hardware from these brackets. And there's a second one in here that needs to come out. And now we have the OEM bracket out. Now I'm gonna install the new bracket. That's snug over there. All right, so now that we have the new bracket fitted, there's one more thing we need to do to get this situated on this side of the motorcycle. And in there, we need to remove that bolt over there because that's what secures the top part of this crash cage. Now we have that bolt out. Now that we have the stock hardware removed, we have the new hardware with the new bracket that's gonna go back in place. As you can see, I'm threading it in place. That bracket is now installed. And now I'm gonna go ahead and install this, hopefully for the last time. So right now we have everything loosely fitted, nothing is torqued in place. As you can see, the lower bolt secures over here. The top one is over there. And right over here, there's a bolt and nut that goes over here to secure it in place. So not very bad. I think it's an okay design, not the greatest of course, but I think it's gonna get the job done. Now with this installed, we can go ahead and completely secure this fairing once again. Now the last hardware for the cage. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? All right guys, if you remember in the previous video, the tail section of this fairing kit was completely missing. I was able to find a replacement one on eBay with exact same color. So I got super lucky over there. And it does have good tabs, unlike the other one that's currently broken and left in the fairing kit. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch this on the motorcycle. Before we can install the fairing on this side, I have to repair the broken parts of the fairing. So over here, I have the fairing kit for the left side of the motorcycle. As you can see, there's one broken tab over here. The fern is broken right here and I have that piece right over here. So I'm going to repair this just like I have before on the channel. It's going to be a time lapse. If you want to know how to repair this, I have a detailed video. I'm going to link it in the, in the description. You can check it out. But in this video, I'm going to run through it as quickly as possible so we can get it mounted on this bike.
Alrighty guys, it's another day in the garage. I'm gonna say it's a really hot day, but we have the Ninja 400. We're almost done working on this bike. I'm gonna show you exactly how those fairings look. So as you can see on the outside, I did trim it out over here just to make sure that the epoxy sticks out really good. Obviously when I intend to paint this, this is gonna be repaired and it's gonna look like nothing ever happened. On the inside, really good. The tabs that were broken are also secured. Really solid, I'm gonna show you guys. So as you can see, this is the broken area. Very, very solid. I'm gonna pick it up by the tab that was repaired. Very solid. Same for over here, very solid. So very solid repair, nothing to worry about. Now, let's install it on the bike. Before we install the fairing kit, I'm gonna go ahead and prep it to install the crash cage like we did on the other side. That bracket is out. Now I'm gonna replace it with a new bracket. Now with that loosely fitted, I'm gonna remove the engine bolt over here. Bolt is out. Now installing the new hardware and the bracket. There is also an OEM spacer that goes between the frame and the engine. Don't forget to put that in. Now I'm gonna install the fairing kit. So now with the fairing loosely fitted, I'm gonna install this crash bar. Now I'm gonna install the tail fairing. All right guys, now that we have most of the fairing installed, I'm gonna go ahead and change this grip. I picked up some really nice pro grips that's gonna go on this bike. It's gonna almost match the current color, good enough for me. Like I said, this bike is just a bike to learn on. In the future, we're gonna be switching up completely different. So stay tuned for that video. Now I have the new ones ready to go on. It looks way better. I already have some grip glue on here. And now that the grip's installed, I'm gonna install the bar and weight now. Alrighty guys, and just like that, we've fitted a whole bunch of parts to this Ninja 400. Definitely looking much better. The next parts we're gonna turn on this bike is this beautiful CarPlay screen from Copyright. Let's unbox it and throw it on the Ninja 400. Beauty, look at that screen guys. Looks excellent. If 
very compact, nice design. The screen comes with a wiring harness and inline fuse over there, as you can see. We have an instruction manual. We have a spare fuse. We have the mounting hardware and more wiring. Alrighty guys, now as you can see, we have the CarPlay screen installed. It's clears on both sides, no problem. So that's all perfect over there. Right now I'm about to hook it up. It is very unfortunate that this does not come, you know, with the D-rings that just go over the battery terminal and they just come like this. It's not a very good design. I hope they change that in the future to make installation way easier. But now I'm gonna go ahead and complete the install, wire this up, and then we can try out this beautiful screen. All right, guys, as you can see, we have the screen started up. This is the screen you see. Not much over here. You go into iPlay because I have an iPhone and then you can see exactly like you would see in your vehicle. You have everything you would see. Let's see that this maps over there. Pretty cool, pretty cool. We also got uh, Google Maps. Some pretty good stuff. So it's pretty responsive, not bad. We can hop into Spotify. And uh, yeah, it's got all the stuff you would need. So pretty cool stuff. If you guys want to pick this up, I'm going to have a link in the description so you can get it. I'm going to have a discount code for you guys. So go check it out, Cop1 if you need it. This is very good. If you're going to go on a long journey, you can have your Google Maps pulled up over here. And don't worry about looking at your phone. Excellent, excellent stuff. Again, with the screen fully installed, there is a little bit of play over here. And this is right in the stem over there. I'm not sure if this is how all of them are, but as you can see, not the worst thing, but just to figure out, point it out to you guys. So that and the terminal to connect it to the battery are the only two things I do not fancy the most about this. But for what it's worth, it's really good. Alrighty guys, that's a wrap for this video. As you can see, the Ninja founder is completely put together, ready to hit the streets. On that note, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, check out the other videos. There's gonna be a new build coming to the channel. We already have the Buick Regal build. We have the sled, but I still have to hop on, but it's just no time. I have all the parts for the sled now. We're almost all, there's a couple more parts remaining. Stay tuned for that video. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out. Anxiety, filling up every space, no privacy. And silently, it could build and build until you finally see. Whoa, it's taking over, damn no closure. Moving closer, no exposure. I just wanna be a loner. Uh, some can't stay sober, looking over all their shoulders, like moving boulders just to get out of the home. It sucks. I've had enough. I don't wanna feel the stuck under the rug. All my problems that I shove. I got nightmares in my head. I fear that the thoughts build up until I can't hear. That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares